Hello and welcome to News Click. The Ministry of Defense in a new notification has announced setting up of Defense Planning Committee. And to discuss the issue, we are joined by D. Raghunandan. Welcome to News Click, Raghu. So let's start with what is this DPC and what will be its role and basically what are its compositions? See, the Defense Planning Committee is a new creation. The idea, I think, is to create a new institutional structure to make up for various deficiencies in the past. It's chaired by the National Security Advisor. Uh, it consists of the three defense chiefs, uh, the chief of the integrated command office at the uh, defense ministry, and three secretaries from the defense ministry in charge of finance, etc. The brief given to this committee is to draw up a national security strategy, a national defense uh, strategy derived from the first, to also supervise the defense production uh, policies and programs in the country, which is of course intimately linked with the defense procurement uh, system and some other uh, tasks. It asks that this committee will prepare reports which would be submitted to the defense minister, leaving open the uh, question of where is, does the decision making lie? If the defense, uh, this committee, makes a recommendation, is the minister bound by it? If not, what are the criteria brought about to change uh, decisions? Or is the political leadership going to override this committee? However, given the composition of this committee, headed by the National Security Advisor, who is known to be very close to the Prime Minister, and who answers essentially to the Prime Minister's office, in a sense to the Prime Minister himself, it's extremely doubtful if Raksha Mantri could overrule the recommendations of this, which means that you have a essentially uh, uh, a committee which is outside the purview of political accountability, not answerable to Parliament, quite capable of saying all these discussions are security related and therefore cannot be uh, revealed, but at the same time give a uh, allowance to the political leadership to say we have taken this decision ourselves. So this also I think the, 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 the recommendations talk about that the committee needs to follow up on the points that they have mentioned, if they're talking about production, they need to follow up with the ministers. And since you're pointing out it, the current National Security Advisor deals directly with the PMO, then the defense minister's role will just be like in stamping authority, right? I find three uh, very serious anomalies with the brief and the mandate given to this uh, committee. The first is that the National Security Advisor who is chairing this committee, is strictly speaking uh, an officer with advisory role rather than an executive role. But this committee combines an advisory role with executive responsibilities, which is highly anomalous. Uh, if there are executive anomalies which lie within the purview of the defense ministry, it should be run by defense ministry and be accountable to Raksha Mantri and through uh, that to Parliament. That does not seem to be the case uh, here. The other major anomaly I find in this is, till now, the national security uh, strategy, if you like, of the country was supposed to have been laid down by the National Security Council. Where does this leave now the National Security Council? The National Security Council was broad-based, had strategic experts, had diplomatic experts, experts drawn from different fields, uh, who could then have given inputs into forming 
the national uh, security uh, doctrine or strategy from which your military doctrine and your defense doctrine could follow. This combines all of them and puts them all into one uh, basket. Not only does it, I think, marginalize the defense minister, it also marginalizes the Ministry of External Affairs and it also marginalizes the National Security uh, Council and the various dimensions to that and essentially makes this a creature of the Prime Minister's office but with the three service chiefs added uh, in a sense as decorations to say we have taken the military into account whereas actually decisions will be taken by the political leadership. So as you have pointed out and this we have been witnessing when we see the NDA regime that consolidation of authorities or the power is happening basically at the Prime Minister's office. The way this government has been pushing uh, defense production and bringing in private players, especially from US and its allies, do you think this is also a move to fasten up that? Well, it may play that role uh, in the sense that since this committee has been given responsibility to oversee defense production, and currently the defense production policy is heavily weighted uh, in favor of private sector players within India, with whom uh, foreign equipment manufacturers from whom India is going to buy equipment are in a sense forcibly linked. On paper there is nothing, there is no compulsion, but with a nudge and a wink you can always indicate to the foreign equipment manufacturer as to who he should tie up with uh, in this country. And with elections around the corner next year and a large number of defense purchases uh, going to take place in the next year or so, if this committee under direct leadership of the Prime Minister's office is given freedom, you are likely to see crony capitalism uh, showing up in a very big way. This is basically what's happening when you see Boeing tying up with Mahindra about those 110 fighter jets and all. Basically then make in India and indigenous production goes into backbench because these, when these private players come, they're not coming with, they're not giving us technology. They're just producing for us, we are buying them and money is going outside, right? Yeah. It depends on how you define make in India. If by make in India, you mean sub-assemblies, subcontracting, uh, screwdriver technology, then you have make in India. On paper, you can show that 30%, 40% of the expenditure is taking place here, but no technology would have been transferred, no serious capability would have been uh, built, which is the crucial function of a national defense or security policy, which is that your industrial base should develop to the extent that it should be independently capable of supporting the military especially in times of conflict. So also because we've been witnessing there has been a massive protest by the defense employees, the, the industries which are there inside India, they have been protesting for the fund crunch, for the, because there has been fund, fund cuts and all. What could have been an alternative that could have ensured that we grow, we become self-sufficient on our own and we don't have to rely on the private players? The most important of these is of course to have a robust, and self-reliant industrial base in this country, not only for manufacture, but also for research and development. In that, a very crucial role has to be played uh, by the military. I think till now, this entire procurement process, as well as the indigenous R&D process, treats the military as giving inputs, but then decision making, financial outlays, procurement processes are run by the civilian bureaucracy, which has very little idea of the technical requirements of these weapons platforms or of the armaments requirements of the uh, military. On the face of it, the only positive of this uh, committee was the presence of the military 
uh, chiefs. chiefs. Because the one thing that this country has long lacked is an integrated planning which will involve top levels of the military leadership along with the civilian leadership of the country under the overall guidance of the political uh, leadership. That has not happened. Several commentators have made this the basis of a positive evaluation of this committee by saying, finally, we have brought the military into the process. I don't think so, because just by bringing in the three service chiefs does not mean there is an integrated planning process of the military which is built from the base up. The real answer to that would have been an integrated defense ministry, which integrates the military presence along with the civilian leadership, build that up, have a technology forecasting and weapons platform forecasting system based on which the Indian industry, of course in the public sector because they have the maximum experience uh, in manufacture as well as research, along with a set of feeder uh, industries which could be from the private sector uh, as well needs to have been developed. That's all the time we have for today, Raghu, and as the committee starts functioning and what they do, we'll follow up these issues once again. Thanks a lot. Thank you for watching News Click.